what we're going to speak today, obviously, it's love month, right? We are also on this journey this year to discover and talk about telios and what maturity looks like. Um, maturity in love, maturity in service, maturity in all aspects uh, of the kingdom of God and how we serve and love the Lord Jesus. Today I want to talk about deliverance, provision, and forgiveness. What does that have to do with love? Deliverance, provision, and forgiveness. If we could all turn to Genesis 17, verse 7. This is a story where God made a covenant. And we know Father Abraham, right? God is a father. And he made a covenant with his people. And he made a covenant with his people through the covenant that he made with Abraham. Who are his people? We all are now today because we've been grafted into this promise that God made with the Israelites. I want to read it. 17 verse 7. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan, where you are now an alien, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. This is a promise that God made. This was a covenant that God made. This was an initiation from God making a promise prophetically with a person and a people. This continues in Exodus 19, which I won't switch to. We will talk about that in a minute when Moses goes onto the mountain and receives the Ten Commandments so that he was giving governance for the people of God. Um, Exodus is probably the most powerful story in the Bible that God references for his deliverance, right? So his people were slaves. They were slaves to Pharaoh. And the Lord delivered them from slavery. If we look at Exodus 15, verse 26... He said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord, the one who heals you. If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord and do what is right in his eyes and pay attention to his commands. So this is kind of the explanation of this covenant that we've been invited into and that he was making. In Exodus 19, verse 4, it continues. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, what is the covenant? Referenced in Exodus 15, 26. If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, if you pay attention to his commands, and keep all of his decrees. All of them. Wow, that is impossible. Keep all of his degree, decrees, decrees. Now if you... Sorry... You yourself see what I did in Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all the nations you will be my treasured possessions. 
do you know that, that you are a treasured mm. possession? You belong. You belong to someone. Mm. So if you've ever felt like you don't belong anywhere, maybe you felt like you don't belong in your own skin, let me encourage you that the God Almighty says, you are my possession. That means you belong. You belong. Just by your own creation, by God, you belong. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. The priests had work to do. When we read about the priests in the Old Testament and the Levites, they had all these tasks that they had to do in the temple. They had all these rules and all these special things that they had to do. God is calling us priests. Do you know what he's calling us? He's actually calling us to a life of service. Hmm. Service to each other and service to the Lord and service to the world. We are priests. We are called to service. We have many servants in this church. And we have some people that need to step in and start serving. I want to encourage you with the worship team, with the kids ministry, with the door ministry, with the prayer ministry, with the drive a hot rod and tell people about Jesus ministry, <laughs> with the you can make one up, with the put the chairs away ministry, with the jokes ministry, with the hospitality ministry, with inviting people to your house and cooking them a meal ministry, <laughs> with paying somebody's bills ministry, with being a good listener, with being a father. You know, I have this old Bible of my dad's that I'm fortunate to preach out of today and uh he doesn't know that i have it i've had it for years he must have left it at my house and he doesn't miss it but it has these old <laughs> old notes in it and it's really cute and i really like it he's he has these old notes here's one of these i i saw here's an old note i'll read you this is a bad thing it better be a good note you know he's watching Vow <laughs> at the back of the bible it says oh. it says vowing to be happy with God before I start each day. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's my dad. Yeah. <laughs> that's legacy. Yeah. If you don't have a legacy and you don't feel like you felt like you don't belong, let me encourage you that there is legacy in this family and you belong here. And there is a purpose to you being here. Yeah. There's a purpose and an act of service for you being here. You are not here to take. You are here to give. Now, you are here now today to be encouraged. And when we come on a Sunday, we get encouraged. But the reason we get encouraged is because we have something to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We are priests. So great in the worship today. Two things that I was going to talk about. Priest, which is service. And a holy nation. There's those yeah. two things in that song. If you can sing it at the end. Priest. Mm -hmm. Oh, that baby. I know. <laughs> He's watching us. It's so cute. Okay. So deliverance, provision, and forgiveness. So we've read about, we know the story about the deliverance of God's people from Pharaoh. They went through the sea. An amazing miracle. The waters were parted. And you know what happened when they got on the other side? They grumbled, didn't they? <laughs> they complained because they were thirsty. Gosh. Yeah, I want to encourage us all today. We really get it wrong, but I just wonder <laughs> if we had just come through a miracle of a parting sea. Can you imagine grumbling after that? Mm -hmm. Could you imagine not having faith enough to think that God was going to care for us after he just got us out of slavery? We've seen a sea. I, I can't even imagine what it must have felt like to walk through the sea. And then they, they don't have faith for, for provision? Hmm. Well, God provides. Exodus 17. Exodus 17, water from the rock. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped... Uh, Okay, 
There was no water for the people to drink, so they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to test? But the people were thirsty, and they grumbled against Moses. Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children livestock and livestock die of thirst? So the Lord commands Moses. He hits the rock, and the water comes out of the rock, and there's God's provision. This is a picture of God's provision. So we've got deliverance, we've got provision, and now briefly we're going to talk about forgiveness and then we're going to talk about love. Forgiveness. Moses, and by the way, this is true for hundreds and thousands of years. If you look at the nation of Israel's history, they have been delivered, they have been provided for, and they have been forgiven slash judged. All through the history of God's chosen people and of us, we are constantly going through this cycle of deliverance, of provision, and of forgiveness. So the forgiveness part is pretty severe. Moses goes onto the mountain, but what's interesting is he goes to the mountain, the Lord commands him, and there's a cloud, and there's, there's a lot of things there that I won't get into, but I want to make it clear that The people know that he's going up the mountain to meet meet with God. The Bible describes Moses as a man that spoke to God face to face like he was a man. Wow. So here's these people encamped. And they've had a miracle going through the sea out of slavery. They've had a miracle being provided water out of a rock. Now they see a mountain that is scary it's got clouds and smoke and lightning and fire and man this is scary god is here then here's moses who they know is going up to meet with god because they're not allowed to in fact they're not even allowed to touch the foot of the mountain so they're all encamped there but i want to make it clear it's not like moses snuck out in the night and they don't know where he is they knew where he was he was basically right in front of them So he goes on to the mountain. Skipping forward a little bit. In Exodus 32. So we know the scene. There's a scary mountain. Striking this. I just can't even believe that this happened. After all that we've just understood as the story, listen to what they did. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods. (laughs) What? Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses, who brought us out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. So they ask Aaron to make them an idol. And Aaron, gosh, bless him, but wow, did he miss it. He was there too. Man, did he miss it. He tells all of God's people to take their jewelry off, and they melt it down, and they make this this calf of gold, and they all start worshiping it. And Moses comes down out of the mountain. God's given him... All this vision, he's given him the Ten Commandments. He's given him a, uh, a description of the tabernacle. He's given him, so he's up there with God. He's getting all this information. And what happens? He comes down the mountain and he hears singing. <laughs> he hears the people of God, not worshiping God, but worshiping an idol. He's so angry, he breaks the Ten Commandments. What is going on? Aaron, what have you done? So God, in his... Fire, hot, righteous, justified just, justice wants to kill all of them. And Moses prays and beseeches him and speaks to him for the sake of your fame, for the sake of your name, for the sake of your covenant. So the Levites come and talk about judgment and forgiveness. Three Thousand were killed that day. Three thousand people because they worshiped a golden calf. 
That is very severe. And we read other stories of the severity of God's judgment as we read through the Bible, other examples of how he has judged his people. It's very scary, <laughs> but it's awesome. So he forgave them. And in Lamentations, there's a scripture. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. So great is his unfailing love. It doesn't fail. So we know, if I were to ask people in this room, I think we could all pretty easily describe what, the, what, what love is as a concept. But I feel like what the Lord has revealed to me about his heart of love is that actually a part of love, love is covenant. And if we can understand the severity, the purity, the power of covenant in love, covenant is what encourages me to be faithful to my wife because I made a promise to her. It doesn't mean I don't mess up, doesn't mean I don't fail, doesn't mean I don't sin, doesn't mean I don't have to ask for forgiveness. But at the root of my love for her is covenant. It's not just emotion. If it was just emotion, my emotions change. My feelings change. I could feel this, that, or the other, and all of a sudden, I could be with somebody else or doing something terrible. What keeps me from doing that? Choice. And the strength of my commitment, the strength of my resolve, the strength of my covenant and my promise. For God so loved the world, he gave Jesus. For God so covenanted mm. with the world that he gave his son. Because like the Israelites, we can't get it right. <laughs> we have the Ten Commandments and they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. They could not live by the law. They couldn't do it. So for the sake of God's covenant, for the sake of the truth of the promise that he made, he said, right, I'm going to send my son because they can't do it without me. And I'm going to create a way that they can come into righteousness with me and covenant with me in another impossible way. Otherwise, it, was, it would be impossible for us to be right with God. Without Jesus, we cannot do it. So these scriptures, and then I'm going to hand it over to Mel. I want to read a few more, and I want us to consider and think about this, this covenant that we just read about with Father Abraham. In Exodus 34, verse 6, God describes himself, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. That's a pretty good example of his slowness to anger, isn't it? He had every right to kill them all, didn't he? Like within minutes. I mean, I know it's not minutes, but it seems to me like literally within a few passages of Scripture, they've gone from being completely delivered, miraculous provision, and now they're worshiping a man-made calf. What is going on here? He is slow to anger. Thank God he is slow. Thank you, Jesus. You are slow to anger. I deserve judgment. I deserve it. In Psalm 103, verse 8, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. The Bible repeats. It's really helpful for people like me because sometimes I need to hear it and see it in a bunch of different ways to finally get it. So there, <laughs> there, there it is again. Compassionate and gracious, slow to anger. Oh, that I would be slow to anger. Oh, that I would be compassionate. Psalm 107, verse 43. This is great. I thought of Pat. No, not that one. The next one I thought of Pat. Okay, we'll do that one in one second, and then I'll 
Okay, Psalm 107, <laughs> verse 43. Whoever is wise, let him heed these things and consider the great love of the Lord. Yes. <laughs> consider, to think about, to ponder, to chew over. <laughs> He's fighting with Siri. <laughs> now it's going to get a little, a little deeper. Proverbs 1, verse 7. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Whoever is wise, let him heed these things. Whoever is wise, let them obey the covenant that God has made. This, this is his covenant. Mm. This is, he instigated this. He said it. He did it. So if we're to be wise, let us think about it and let us fear the Lord. Okay, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And I really do want to speak about the fear of the Lord if I'm invited back. Um, and this is not cowering in the closet shaking because you're afraid you're going to die by this righteous, just, and powerful God that's going to smite you. The fear of the Lord is the awe. The fear of the Lord is obedience. The fear of the Lord is holiness. The fear of the Lord is kindness. The fear of the Lord is justice. Psalm 103, verse 11, for as for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love, so great is his covenant. Hmm. They, you know, people haven't found the ends of the sky yet, right? There's all these heavens and there's heavens and there's heavens and there's galaxies and we're a part of whatever galaxy and there's a, there's a, there's a guy, Julio or Julio or whatever, Iglio, and he does this thing, it's, it's really amazing, and he shows how we're like this tiny, they can't, even, they can't even use a pen to make the mark on the board compared to the vastness of the galaxy. Mm. Like, even the, the, the prick of the pen is too big of a dot compared to the galaxy. Wow. And the Bible says, for as high as the heavens are, mm. so great is his love, so great is his covenant. Oh, boy, but guess what? <laughs> It's there for those who fear him. Yeah. How, do we, how do we fear the Lord in a proper way? I want to talk about that sometime, and today's not that day, but I do. Verse 13, carrying on. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Mm -hmm. We need to fear the Lord. 17 and 18, from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love, the Lord's covenant is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children. What is God's righteousness? For one, it's eternal life, right? Because we've become a new man. We've been made right with God because we respond to his invitation. If you do not know Jesus and you have not made a decision in your heart to follow Jesus or if you have fallen away from following Jesus and you are lazy and you are bored and you are uh, afraid and maybe you were a kid and you were committed and you've fallen off and just by some miracle grace of God you're hearing this message today, I really want to encourage you to make a response and to make a commitment to enter into this covenant with God because it is an everlasting covenant because this age will end. Mm. Our current experiences is going to end. We are going to die. Either he comes and we see him or we die and we see him, but that will happen. His righteousness with their children and their children's children, just like the legacy of my father's Bible, and there's legacy here. There's legacy in that man, Mr. Minter, right there. If you need a father, there are fathers in this house that can come around you and teach you about the legacy of God. They can come around you and help you. They can encourage you. 
They can strengthen you. If you need a mother, my mother Penny, 84 years old, I get to sit here and I watch her. She sits over here in her little arms. She worships God. What a privilege. If you need a mother, Fee Reynolds. There are mothers here. We belong, remember? We belong. This is a family. We belong here. But we belong here for purpose. Mm. Yeah. With those who keep his covenant. There it is. We have to keep it. And remember to obey his precepts, which is Exodus 19. Did we read Exodus 19? I don't know, but I'm going to give it back to Mel. Or I'm going to give it to Mel. Um, Exodus 19. That was when Moses went into the mountain. Okay. Melly. We need the Holy Spirit. You took the words right out of my mouth. We need the Holy Spirit, so. You can keep it on in case you need to interject. In order for us as God's people to say yes to this covenant and live the life that he wants us to live, we have to have the Holy Spirit. We have to. In order for us as God's people to say yes to his covenant, it's bouncing back up. There we go. Oh, there we go. I think I'm good now. Okay. In order for us as God's people to say yes to his covenant and live the life that he wants us to live, we have to have the Holy Spirit. And when we receive Jesus into our hearts, we, the Holy Spirit comes as our helper, but it's not the same as baptism in the Holy Spirit because the baptism brings gifts and fruit. We, um, was that October when Julian was here? Julian came and talked to the leaders and he said something so profound, you know how something just gets said and it just changes your thinking. He was talking about joy and he said, it's not an emotion, it's a fruit. And we, I was like, whoa, it made me think about all of them. And I started writing this then. <laughs> and then we started talking about all this love stuff. So I'm going to go into the fruit because I think it's really important. I'm going to read the good Galatians verse. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. We, everybody knows these. I, you know them all. I'm going to age myself. I, everybody knows, I hope, the music machine. I was Nancy in second grade in the music machine play. Um, they were posted up on the wall. I knew the, the fruit of the Spirit. But to live with the fruit of the Spirit is different. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. There, these, are, these fruits are actual benefits of living your life filled up with the Holy Spirit. God himself was sent. He, God himself sent the Holy Spirit to be our helper. He was sent to help us. Let him. I have to tell myself all the time. I'm like, I learned that from Pat. Pat. I learned so much from Pat, all that lady. But she'll, we were talking about something frustrating, and she was like, hold on. Holy Spirit, do not, do not let me carry this frustration all day. And I, I do that all the time now, where I'm like frustrated about something, and you want to keep replaying it in your head, and like, oh, I should have said, or whatever. No, Holy Spirit, please. Oh. In the same way, Romans 8.26 says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Holy Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. The Holy Spirit is mentioned so many times in the book of Acts. Filling, helping, guiding, calling, aiding, growing, sanctifying, maturing, organizing, assisting, regenerating, teaching, testifying to, interceding for, reminding, grieving over, and loving believers who make up the church. We need the Holy Spirit to daily dwell in us. When we receive the Holy Spirit as our helper, he becomes our lifeline. And the Holy Spirit does all those things for us, and we get to enjoy the fruit. 
These fruits are things that we can freely and rely on to help us. All the fruits of the Spirit must be practiced every single day to become our lifestyle with God and others. And because we have an enemy that seeks to destroy everything. So we have to think of these things as actual fruit. I was talking, we were talking to the youth and I told them this too. I'm like, you have to think of them as actual fruit that you go and pick up and put in your basket every day. You do not go to the grocery store and buy all the fruit you need for your whole life once. You don't. You got to keep picking it up. You got to keep picking it up. And sometimes a little rotten piece gets in your fruit bowl. You got to start over. You got to get back. Get back with the Holy Spirit and get filling up your basket. They're free and they're sent to help you. So every day... Every day I call out to the Holy Spirit, Lord, please, Holy Spirit, please give me love for my husband. Give me love for my children. Give me love for people. You have sometimes, I'm saying, give me patience. How about that? (laughs) So, and I love how all the fruit of the Spirit go together because if you are filled with love for each other and your family and your coworkers, you know that's going to bring you peace. And you know if you have peace and love, you're going to have joy. And if you're filled, it just keeps going. It just ke- I know. <laughs> Do all of it. Peace, love, joy, peace. Then you know, you know you're going to have patience, right? You can't help but exercise patience if you have peace and joy and love. We need it. We need all of it. In regards to love, dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us. And his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Man, I love that verse. That's 1 John 4, 11 and 13 through 13. Another one is, for you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Love, serve one another in love. Get with people that you can learn from and love. Go to the life groups, go to Bible studies. That event last night, it was, it was so fun. For all you people that missed it and all you single people that weren't invited, we're going to do another one because it was fun. We had a dance floor and we just laughed and danced and talked with each other. And it was never, there was never a lull. It was just living life together. And it was just so fun. Even the clear up, even the clear up. My heart was so full after that. I couldn't even hardly sleep. <laughs> It was so good. But get with people. Sit with people. Invite them over. Go out. Do stuff. That's being priestly. It's acts of service. It's learning to have compassion and care for one another. Romans 5.5 5 says, For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. I love that. I love that. It brings us to joy really quick. I know we're talking about love, but I'm going through the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, because I love it. The Lord is my strength and my shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me, and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. Burst out in thanksgiving. Start your day with it. End your day with it. Do it in the middle of the day. Thank him all day long. You will be filled with joy if you do. It's just a benefit. It's a benefit, and it's free. It's free. <laughs> All right. Peace. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holy, holiness with which no one will see the Lord. Yeah. Hebrews 12, 14. John 14, 27 says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift that c- the world cannot give. The world cannot. <laughs> so don't be troubled or afraid because that's what the world gives. My boys leave for school. I hear them start their old cars. <laughs> and I'm, I just pray, Lord, get them to school safe. Help them to make good decisions. There's power. And I, I am filled with peace as soon as I do it. Because it could get you stirred up when your kids leave 
especially in old cars. <laughs> But you, you are, I am filled with peace. There's power in a praying mom and a, and a praying dad and praying for your friends. I pray for my friends a lot. If you want God's peace, you need to have God's priorities. And if you want his peace, you need his plans to be your plans. And you need to rest in his plan. And to do that, you got to have patience. May God, who gives this patience and encouragement, help you live in complete harmony with each other as is fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. It's Romans 15, 5. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into temptations, knowing this, trying that the trying of your faith works, your pa- works patience. Sorry, this is written down in the King James Version, and I'm having a really hard time. It's saying ye and stuff. I can't. <laughs> but let patience have her perfect work, that you may, might be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Perfect and entire. Isn't that funny that patience is a girl? Yeah. <laughs> That's the King James Version. That was me. So. <laughs> perfect and entire. Grown up, if you will. Telios. I was looking at a study of tele, of the word teleos, and I quote this. I love this quote. The teleos is one who has attained moral maturity, the goal for which he was intended, namely to be a man obedient in Christ. Man, I love that. I love that. All I want to do is be obedient, and it's hard. It's not easy. That's why we need each other, and that's why we need the fruit. <laughs> I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. I waited patiently. I waited. I can't say that I wait patiently always, but I can say that I know he, he is in control. And I know that, and I patiently wait. Patience isn't the ability to wait. It's the ability to keep a good attitude while you're waiting. And that's why we need the fruit. (laughs) Kindness. Whoever pursues righteousness and kindness will find life, righteousness, and honor. Proverbs 21, 21. Whoever pursues righteousness and kindness will find life, righteousness, and honor. Why? Because you're living your life right. Righteousness and honor. And as you practice the fruit of kindness, you'll start to recognize more and more that it's transforming you into his likeness. Because he is so kind, isn't he? So kind. Goodness. We know that all the goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life, right? But therefore, in Galatians 6.10, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people especially to those who belong to the family of believers. There is something about family in this building because the moment we walked in here, we knew this was our place. And it was after searching for years for a family. We searched for so many years. We would drive around, whatever church we were going to, we would drive around for a house to be by that church. This time we found a house, and then we found Life Church, and it has been our place Oh, it's such a good, it's such a good family here. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times may abound, may you abound in every good work. That's 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. All and every. I love it. Faithfulness. John touched on the faithfulness. Do you want to read that one again? The Exodus 34? Yeah. Should I give him the mic again? No. <laughs> oh, 34.6, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger. Abounding in love yeah. and faithfulness. Abounding yeah. in love, overflowing with faithfulness. The rider on the white horse is the one who is called faithful and true. Yeah. yeah. He is faithful and he is true and he is reliable. Mm-hmm. And you can bet everything on him. Yeah, it's so true. And he's gentle. I love it. I love that he's all these things, all these things that I want to be. Be completely humble and gentle, Ephesians 6, 4, 2. Gentleness, I read this Graham Cook quote. I love it. 
Gentleness is not weakness. It is strength under control. Man, self-control. That's where you go next. The Bible says that we, if we don't have self-control, we are slaves to what controls us. No, oh, thank you. I've been down that road, and I do not like it, and I will never be down that road again. <laughs> no. Being self-controlled is just, it's the whole foundation of living a life of righteousness and selflessness that reflects Jesus and brings glory to God. I just want to bring glory to him all the days of our life. And it gives us the power to put sin under control. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. It's another, it repeats, because that wasn't where that verse was found. James 1.9 was that one. You will never, John Maxwell, this is a good quote. You will never change your life until you change something you do daily. The secret of your success is found as your, in your daily routine. So if you're feeling off or some sort of weird way, you need to check your basket. All right. So we're going to close, but as we do, um, if everyone could just prepare their hearts, if you could play the guitar a little bit for us. Um, we're going to have a Telios moment for a second here with Josh Rhodes, and he doesn't know this is going to happen, but that's okay. The Holy Spirit knew that it was going to happen. Hmm. So Josh, if you want to come up here, you can take your hat off. <laughs> um, but also to it's important that we understand the truth of the second baptism of the baptism of the Holy Spirit it's important that we don't do things under compulsion or obligation when it comes to making decisions in our life to follow Jesus it's great that we respond to Jesus it's great that we respond to the call but let's put emotion to the side for a minute it's not about fuzzy feelings it's not about emotion it's about a fact, and the fact is, is that when Jesus ascended, he said to his disciples, I have given you the Holy Spirit, and he is your helper. She is your helper. And so there are messages. Fee preaches a wonderful message about the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There are other things that you can find and search out about that, and I, I encourage you to do so. But the Bible actually instructs us that to keep on being filled, it's not a one-time event because we become bogged down by family, by job, by circumstance, by the difficulty of life, by sin, by sickness, by disappointment. But are we going to be a people that experience miracles and then build a calf? We're not going to be that people. So I want to encourage all of us today. You close your eyes and open your heart. Ask the Lord Jesus, who is the one who reveals mystery. Ask him to reveal the mystery of the baptism of the Holy Spirit to your heart. Because we all desperately need it. We need it every day so that we can be successful in this journey that we're on in serving the Lord and doing what he's called us to do. So Josh, the Telius moment for you is um, we talk about maturity and I'm not saying that you're not mature um, but there's this funny name. It's fresh. So I feel like the Lord would say to you today, no longer are you to be known as fresh. Your name, Josh, means God is my salvation. That is not a small thing. Your name means God is my salvation. Father, that it would be that your life is an example and a testimony to the salvation of God. And it's going to start today with your name. You're going to take that upon yourself right now. And it's going to change you. And it's starting with this name. God is going to mature you quickly. 
So we ask you to come, Holy Spirit. We thank you for this man. We thank you for Josh. And we bless him and we bless his life. We thank you for one another. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for forgiving us. If everyone here, if you could just stand. If you want to come to the foot of the mountain, you can pretend it's here. Smoky and scary as it might be next to me. I want to invite you, if you want to recommit your life to the Lord Jesus, if you want to come and be filled with the Holy Spirit, if you want to lay something down and come here as an act of doing so, a sin or a, or a, a feeling, a belief, a hurt, I invite you to come here and do that. If you want to receive more of the Holy Spirit, I invite you to come forward and do that. Why do you have to come forward? You don't have to come forward. But sometimes when you step out of your location, it ignites faith in your heart because you're saying, I'm going to move my body. So many times in our lives we say, God, would you move? God, would you do something? God, would you do this? God, would you do that? And he's there and he's saying, well, why don't you do something? So I'm inviting everyone today, let's all do something in pursuit of Jesus, whatever that might look like in our lives. Let's all make a decision to do that. In Jesus' name, thank you. Bless you. Love you. Please stay. Please leave. Please invite someone to your house. Please take somebody to dinner, especially feet. Thank you. Amen.